Good morning. Welcome to worship today. It's good to see everyone here and uh, to gather in God's house and to uh, receive from him all that he wants to give us, namely his, 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 uh, his forgiveness, his life, and his salvation through Christ. So let's uh, rise and greet those folks around us as we prepare for worship today. Make sure you fill out a connection card and uh, just let us know that you were here. So let's begin with our opening hymn.
congregation please rise as you're able as we begin our service with confession and absolution. We begin our service now in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all our sins. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father, most merciful God. We confess that we are against you, God in his mercy has given his son to die for each and every one of you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. God have a be with you. Let us pray. Oh God, because your abiding presence always goes with us, keep us aware of your daily mercies, that we may live secure and content in your eternal love. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our readings. Our Old Testament reading for today is from Jeremiah 20, verses 7 through 13. O Lord, you have deceived me, and I was deceived. You are stronger than I, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughingstock all the day. Everyone mocks me. 
For whenever I speak, I cry out, I shout, violence and destruction, for the word of the Lord has become before me a reproach and a derision all day long. If I say I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, there is in my heart, as it were, a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. For I hear many whispering, terror is on every side. Denounce him, let us denounce him, say all my close friends watching for my fall. Perhaps he will be deceived, then we can overcome him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me as a dread warrior. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble. They will not overcome me. They will be greatly shamed, for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, who tests the righteous, who sees the heart and the mind, let me see your vengeance upon them. For to you I have, have I committed my cause. Sing to the Lord. Praise the Lord. For he has delivered the life of the needy from the hand of the evildoers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We read Psalm 91 responsively. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his hands, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is the shield of the Lord. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks on the earth, nor the destruction that A thousand may fall at your side. 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our epistle is from 2 Corinthians chapter 8. I want you to know, brothers, about the grace of God that has been given among the churches of Macedonia. For in a severe test of affliction, their abundance of joy and their extreme poverty have overflowed in a wealth of generosity on their part. For they gave according to their means, as I can testify, and beyond their means, of their own free will, begging us earnestly for the favor of taking part in the relief of the saints. <coughs> and this, not as we expected, but they gave, them, their, gave themselves first to the Lord and then by the will of God to us. Accordingly, we urged Titus that as he had started, he, he should complete among you this act of grace. But as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in all earnestness, and in our love for you, see that you excel in this act of grace also. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise as you're able. Hallelujah, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 10th chapter. These 12 Jesus sent out instructing them, Brother will deliver brother over to death, and the father his child, and children will rise against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake but the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. For truly I say to you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for the disciple to be like his teacher and the servant like his master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they malign those of, the, of his household? So have no fear of them, 
For nothing is covered that will not be revealed or hidden that will not be made known. What I tell you in the dark, say in the light. What you hear whispered proclaimed on the housetops. And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? And not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. But even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. So everyone who acknowledges me before men, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I also will deny before my Father who is in heaven. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated for our next hymn. Please be seated and let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord my God. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So today we're wrapping up our, um, our time here of serving, or this month rather, of, of uh, um, focusing on uh, um, offering, uh, uh, discovering the joy of sharing God's blessings. And uh, um, today we're going to look at the last one of uh, discovering the joy in giving. So uh, we're going to look at our, our text from 2 Corinthians chapter 8. If you want to follow along in your pew Bible, it's 820, page 820, uh, 2 Corinthians 8. I'm going to read the first uh, couple of verses here. And now, brothers, we want you to know about the grace that God has given the, uh, has given the Macedonian churches. Out of the most severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. For I testify that they gave as much as they were able, and even beyond their ability, entirely on their own, they urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in this service to the saints. They did not do as we expected, but they gave themselves first to the Lord and then to us in keeping with uh, God's will." So we urged Titus, since he had earlier need, uh, made a beginning, to bring also to completion this act of grace on your part. But just as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestness, and in your love for us, see that you also excel in the grace of giving. Verse 8, I am not commanding you, but I want to test the sincerity of your love by comparing it with the earnestness of others, for you know that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you through his poverty might become rich. So what we see here, um, as we talk about the joy of giving, um, you know, we started out 
uh, being reminded the first week about the joy that we receive, of course, comes from Christ alone. Um, the world provides temporary joy, and you know, I too can experience that temporary joy, but it's, it's short-lived. Um, and then we um, talked about um, um, the different... Uh, just talked about the joy of, of uh, serving uh, last week and now of giving. And so here's a situation where a church in Macedonia, which was a province outside or, you know, Jerusalem was here. Macedonia was a little ways away. And um, it talks about the, some churches there that were financially, um, they were struggling. They probably couldn't afford a pastor. So, uh, and uh, who knows if they could pay the bills, but, uh, but who knows? It doesn't matter. But what it says, though, and the main thing is a couple things here is one, it says they first committed themselves to the Lord. They just prayed. They, they confessed their sins, received God's gracious forgiveness. And then they, they just prayed for God's will, whatever that might be. And um, part of that will, because their desire was then to share in the ministry in other churches in the area, because... You know, before there was the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod, there wasn't, there were just church bodies that, random church bodies around, okay? And uh, this Macedonian church, and they heard that the church in Jerusalem, which is another church, they didn't, you know, probably really know the people, but they knew there were Christians in Jerusalem, and they heard that those Christians were struggling. And so even though the church in Macedonia was poor, the way I understand from the scripture, they, um, they really wanted to help. And so they prayed, and then God, you know, they gave. It says they gave out of their poverty, and, uh, um, and they gave money to go to another church to help the church in Jerusalem. And, you know, to me, this is just an amazing example of, of, of well, of experiencing God's joy in all of our lives, no matter what we have. Because, you know, Paul elsewhere talks about, you know, he knows what it's like to have plenty and have nothing, to be starving and to be, you know, so overfold you can't stand it, and, you know, to everything in between. And, uh, and, and he understands what it all, but that it all comes from God. And so the church here in Macedonia, they want to, uh, they want to help. Uh, they want to give. Um, even though it's kind of so counterproductive to their life and to their society, even to our society. So as we talk about the joy, uh, discovering joy of giving, I'm going to, I want to, uh, this, in my, there's a little story here that was in my, uh, uh, some of my notes here for this, this series. So uh, it talks about a man who wanders in the desert. He's nearly dead from thirst, struggling against the wind and sand. He sees an oasis in the distance. Upon reaching the oasis, he discovers the oasis is much different than other oasis he has ever visited. Part of me is like, why doesn't this man get into town? I mean, why is he going from desert to desert and from oasis to oasis? But maybe some of us are that way. There are palm trees here at this particular one. There's no pool of water. Instead, he finds a well with a pump. Near the pump is a jar of water. As he puts the jar of water up to his lips, he sees a piece of parchment with a note written on it. The note reads, in this jar of water, there's enough water to keep you alive for one or two days. But to have all the water that you want, you need to follow these directions carefully. Pour the entire jar of water into the pump. There's enough water that will soften in the jar, that will soften the leather gaskets, and will allow the pump to move, and it will work, which means then the guy can have all the, all the water he wants. And then there's a little PS at the bottom of the little piece of paper. It says, when you're finished, please finish, please refill the jar of water for the next traveler. So, of course, the question is, is you know, my notes were asking is, you know, are you going to trust the note? <laughs> I'm glad that one person wait, shook their head yes, so that's good. Uh, what, what else are you, I mean, what's the other option? The other option is to drink the water and not have anything else, right? I mean, that's the other option, two options. And the first one is gonna, is gonna be good, even though we don't know, and we're not sure, and uh, um, we're, you know, can we believe it? Can we not believe it? So I'm gonna turn this thing off because I've, it's really annoying my, I don't know if everyone else can hear it fine. Is it okay? It sounds terrible, so. Uh, all right, well, I'll leave it on, even though, it, okay. So then the question is, you know, does he trust the note or not? And then, you know, ultimately, are we trusting the, the things that we hear of the world, whatever that might be, okay? I read the news, and then I can hear, oh, you know, the, what, the world's going to end, or I don't know, there's, 
It's hard to tell. The sun's going to crash into the earth, or I don't know, the world's going to explode, or I don't know, the world's going to sink and outside, you know, just whatever. You know, you think of some terrible thing, and, you know, I'm sure the news is going to tell us about it, okay? And then we want to know, we're going to believe it. Or am I just going to keep going out there and planting my garden and watering it and pruning the, the, you know, the plants and what so that I get good, good harvest for next year or for this year? Well, I'm, I'm probably just going to go and, and, you know, go out and keep harvesting. I'm reminded of, you know, and I don't know where this is written in, in, uh, um, in Luther's works, but allegedly, you know, reportedly, Luther said that, you know, if he knew that Jesus was going to come back tomorrow, he would still plant an apple tree today. Okay, now, whether or not he actually said that or not, it's, it's, the, the, that's not the, the point. Okay, the point is that Luther didn't care. He was going to trust God day in and day out, and he was going to get up, live his life that God's called him to live, and to trust him no matter what is going on, no matter what happens tomorrow, because we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. None of us do, you know. Now, some people I know, they seem to live in constant fear of what's going to happen tomorrow, and they worry about how am I going to take care of myself and my family, and uh, you know what? If you don't believe in Jesus, then the whole world is going to be burdensome, and it is going to be terrible for your life because you're just going to wake up, you're going to feel the burden of the world on your shoulders and think, I've got to solve all the problems. Do I trust this or do I trust that? Because even unbelievers trust in something, because we all trust in something, right? Right? Now, sometimes we might not trust something because we know it's not to be true, but that's okay. God promises that wh whatever he has written down, everything he's written down is true, okay? There's nothing, there's no lie in the Bible, okay? That's not a trick question, not a trick statement, okay? There's no lie, okay? Because what God says is going to be true. He is not going to say something and be like, ah, wait a second, I'm kidding. I didn't mean that. No, that's not, that's not all what's happening, okay? Never. Everything in the Word of God is true. Now, what come, what, because I can know some of you are like, well, wait a minute, Pastor, what about that one passage in Obadiah or in Leviticus, okay? Because some of you are like crazy about that, I'm sure. So you're just like always reading Leviticus, and uh, that's good. Okay, but, and you're like, but that one's contradicting some passage in the New Testament, okay? The entire Bible it never contradicts itself, okay? Scripture inter interprets Scripture. So what has been written in the Old Testament can be confirmed and affirmed in the New Testament. Or what, one part of Old Testament, and then it can conf confirm and affirm another part of the Old Testament, okay? That's how it is. So if you don't, if, you know, it, because what it is is we get frustrated when we read a certain passage in Scripture, you know, and then you're like, throw the Bible away, because heck with that, I don't want to hear what that is anymore, because, you know, that's an example right there. I've said this before. That's an example. When you get frustrated after you read something in the Bible, it's because the Holy Spirit's working in your life right there. Okay, sometimes that happens to me. I know that's hard to believe. You know, I am not perfect, and believe me, I don't want to be, okay? And I don't claim to be. I, I don't want to be perfect. I don't want to be Jesus. I mean, some days it would be nice, because I feel like it might be easier, but you know what? It isn't. It's going to be harder if it's perfect. And, uh, and, but when something, you know, kind of pricks my heart, or when I read a passage, that's the spirit right there working in my life saying, listen, Labu, I need you to work on this area of your life. Now I might not, I might not want to, to listen to the spirit. Okay. Maybe you don't want to listen to the spirit. Okay. Well, you know, God gives us a free will, but he does want us to listen to him because that's how he grows us in the grace and knowledge of what he's done for us. He wants us to trust him. And so, you know, we've talked these last three weeks so far about that we receive joy in Jesus and that we, he fills up with us with all that we need for this body and soul, eyes, ears, members, that he, that he provides for my, my, my needs of my house and home, land, animals, all that I have. And he takes care of them because he loves us, okay? But if I, if I, if when I come from that perspective, then I, then I know, okay, that whatever Jesus is going to do for me, it's going to be for my good. It can be hard. It could be awful. Okay. Because nowhere does Jesus say you're going to live a perfect life. Okay. No, you're not. Isaiah says it clearly. When you walk through the waters, you won't drown. When you walk through the fires, you won't get burned up. Okay, well, that's thankful, okay? Because I don't want to get burned up. I don't want to drown in some water, okay? 
But of course, Isaiah is getting at that, you know, even his people were going through hard times. They were going through difficult times, and they hated their lives. When they all got shipped off to Babylon, do you think there was a joyful reunion or joyful uh, journey on a vacation? You know, they hated their lives, okay? They hated the Babylonians. They weren't, they weren't Israelites. They didn't worship the one true God. God shipped them off because they disobeyed. You know, they went in waves. They all didn't go on one fell swoop, but, you know, they went in waves, three or four waves of, you know, and then they lived in Babylon. And, uh, and I'm pretty sure, I think there's a few, few uh, videos out there about this, but, you know, that when they were in Babylon, they probably hated their lives too. And they despised the Babylonians. Think about that, okay? Think if, for example, we were, a, a, we were, we're Christians. And imagine that the rest of Illinois was something else. I mean, it already is, but just imagine it's like some other, you know, whatever, some, some other oddball thing or something. But we don't really want to live here. I do, okay? I'm not saying we don't want to live in Illinois. Just bear with me, okay? Say we're from Iowa, okay? Iowa's nice. They have corn, okay? And so say we're from Iowa, but we got shipped to, to the Chicagoland area, and we sure don't like living in the Chicagoland area because then Babylonians, they're yucky people, Okay? They're not eating corn. They don't even know what good food is, okay? They're eating hot dogs. I'm just kidding, okay? <laughs> I'm just kidding. But say we don't like hot dogs because we like corn, okay? And we, but we have to live here because God brought us here, okay? So we have to learn to appreciate the people that we live with because we have to still survive and live and move and have our being, right? We still have to work. We still have to buy groceries. We still have to engage with the people around us, Okay? And we learn, because God teaches us through this growing process where it's hard, but you know what? He's, he still provides for the people, okay? You can read it for yourself if you don't remember that, okay? Open up into Kings and uh, into Chronicles, and you can see all the events that are going on there, okay? But they just continue to grow, and they continue to trust God. So their leaders, the priests, the Levites, even in Babylon, they teach the people, remind the people what God's word says. Trust God you know, seek the, the welfare of the city, God even tells the people, okay? Pray for the people. Pray for the leaders, okay? That's why we pray in the prayers of the church, because to me it's important, okay? You don't have to like the government leaders that we have, but we still need to pray for them. We still need to respect them, because those are the people God has put in power in their situation right now for, for this time, okay? But we still have to trust him, but we still have to give of ourselves, okay? Because even those Israelites, when they lived in Babylon, they didn't, they might not have liked living there, okay? But God told them, I want you to plant a garden, set up house, you know, marry, get your children to marry, you know, not necessarily the, the, the Babylonian children, but, you know, other Israelite children and raise your children, you know, have yummy tomatoes for supper and, and cucumbers and whatever and, and pray and enjoy but also participate in, 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 in that, okay? Now, participate doesn't mean that you participate in the sinful things that the Babylonians were doing or maybe us in Chicagoland are doing, okay? We still, we still live and move and, and operate as believers in Christ no matter where we are, no matter who we are. We still need to give of ourselves, serving, helping out, giving of our resources, giving of our time, giving of our, our abilities and skills, whatever that might be within the congregation and within the community. Because everybody around us needs to see Jesus. Everyone. Some people don't want to, and some people don't care. But your job is not to go around and, you know, twist people's arms, say, listen, bucko, I need you to listen to what I say about Jesus and smack him upside the head because that, I can tell you right there, that's, that's, a, that's a terrible evangelism technique, okay? So don't, don't try that at home, okay? It's not going to work. Um, I can guarantee you. I, I'm not speaking from experience, but we, we, we honor the Lord with our wealth, Proverbs tells us, honor the Lord with our wealth and with the first fruits of all your produce, then your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will be bursting with wine, Whoever is generous in the, to the poor lends to the Lord, and he will repay him for all his deeds. We, we, we don't give because the pastor harps on it and because you feel begrudgingly uh, unfortunate and have a bad attitude about it. We give because why wouldn't we? We give because Jesus has already given us more than we deserve, okay? Because remember, what do we deserve? 
nobody's here perfect. No, I like all you people, and I, you know, everyone's great here, okay, but none of us is perfect, okay? And uh, Romans tells us, all have sinned, every single person on the planet, okay? But all have been justified by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Justified. It is just as if you've never sinned. You've been justified. You've been made right and holy because of Jesus' uh, suffering and his uh, death and his victorious, glorious resurrection from the dead, giving you new life. And so because of that, Jesus continues to pour into us what we need, maybe more than we need, and so that's then when you say, oh, well, I better, you know, like the, like the parable that Jesus talks about in the Gospels about, don't be like the farmer who says, I've grown enough corn to feed the western half of Iowa so, or northern Illinois or whatever, and so therefore I don't have to work anymore. I'm just going to build the build a biggest barn around and uh, shove all my corn in there until I can get the best price for it, and then I'm going to sit on my duff for the rest of the year and not do anything. Okay, that's, that's, not, that's not at all what God asked of him, okay? Jesus tells us that that guy that said, today I'm going to take your life because you're hoarding and because you're coveting and you're breaking all the commandments. If you break one, you're breaking them all. It's broken them all, so, okay? But we give. So if you've got an abundance, then you should give. Now, I'm not saying that you have to give everything all the time, Okay? God will prompt you when you follow the Macedonian example of first giving yourself to the Lord, first praying, God, help me to know how should I serve, how should I give. Also, I'm not standing up here preaching week after week talking about giving because I want the church, I want you to give money to the church, okay? I want, I'm preaching God's word about this because I want you to learn and help us grow together as a congregation about the desire and willingness to serve and give because you want to give, not because Pastor Lou is harping on it for four weeks. Because God, I want God to work in your heart a willingness to serve and to give, whatever that might be, okay? Now, God's not going to call of you to serve the same thing. Absolutely not, okay? Because God knows what the congregation needs. He also knows what our immediate, con immediate uh, community needs, okay? <clears throat> not everybody is going to be called to serve with the cafe or with the food pantry, but they're gonna be, you're going to be called to do other things, okay? God's going to ask you to give in a variety of ways of your, of your time to come and serve in some way or to give of things you have, resources, <clears throat> And remember, one of the things I'm, I'm uh, next month, we're going to be talking about the offerings in the Old Testament, the, in Leviticus. So everyone should be excited about Leviticus. It's actually been very fun. So, but one of the key things that we've, that we've been talking about and that I've been studying about this as we're preparing for this, this sermon series is that, you know, God asked us to bring our best, okay? God doesn't want your trash, Okay? Also, I thought when I thought when I said that out loud, and I remember I typed that actually that phrase, and I thought, well, of course he doesn't need our trash because we've already done a good job of trashing things in this world with our sinful world, words, thoughts, and deeds. Okay, God wants your best. That's why he asked for all the offerings that he, you know, that we'll we'll study in Leviticus. <clears throat> um, that's why he, the, it had to be perfect. The animal had to be perfect. The flower had to be the best. Okay, don't bring rancid flour. Don't bring a flour that's got weevils in it. Um, you know, and don't bring a, a, a lamb that's got a broken leg. Um, okay, you bring the best. Okay, and the example I, 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 I hear was from the pastor at some church um, where uh, he was trying to use the can opener and, uh, and it wasn't working. It was an electric one, one of those little electric ones wasn't working, and some lady comes into the fellowship hall, sees the pastor struggling with trying to open a can with the electric can opener, and the lady says, oh, pastor, that always did that with uh, for us when we had it at home. Okay, that's, that's a, at that point, that lady should not have donated it to the church. She should have thrown it in the trash, okay? Because God doesn't want your trash, I was also hearing the story about when they were collecting toilet paper and the pastor said, bring the good stuff that you use. Don't bring the scratchy stuff that you don't buy, okay? Bring the good stuff, okay? Because somebody else's behind is just as good as yours, okay? So 
Don't bring your trash, okay? And, and so in giving, because sometimes we're that way, okay? I, sometimes I've thought that too. I, real, I mean, I've, I'm changing and learning my own self about my attitude about giving, okay? I don't bring my yard sale stuff to the church, okay, to give to God. If the church is having a yard sale and everybody's bringing their yard sale stuff, then by all means, everyone drag your boxes of yard sale stuff and we'll have a yard sale together. But I don't bring my yard sale box, and I've got three of them going right now so far, okay? I don't bring that and bring it up here and say, here, God, have my junk. You don't want my junk? Because that's a bad attitude of giving, okay? The Macedonians were poor, but, God, they, but they, they prayed and they asked, Paul, can we still give? And, you know, and, and Paul's almost like, you know, you don't, don't worry about it. But they wanted to give, they didn't have a lot, but they wanted to give. And I've, I've thought of that too. That's, the, that's like the might about the, the, you know, the scenario where, where Jesus and his disciples are watching the people going into the temple and the rich people, and they've got these big boxes, and they come in, and they're dumping. You know, they're just dumping so much money in there. It's clanking and so much money. And it can look impressive. And then some old lady comes by, and she's got two little pennies, and she drops those puppies in, and that's it. And Jesus is like, that, that's all that lady had to live on this right now, and she gave it to, to the temple. Now, that's not what I'm saying that you need to do, but what's going on there is that, that older lady in, this, in, this, in, this, in the event, in the story is that she, she just trusted God with what she had, okay? She knew that was all she had, but she wanted to give it to God, to the temple. Okay? Now, you don't have to follow that example, but Jesus was saying that, you know, the rich person that came and dumped all the money in and everybody could see the vast that they're dumping in, you know, Jesus basically saying, forget it. I don't, I uh, don't, don't. Just leave your money at home, okay? Because you can, you can, you can give for, with, a, with a bad attitude and you can give with a good attitude. Of course, God wants us to give with a, a generous heart, with a, a, a good attitude. We give because, you know, God first gave to us. He gave us Jesus so that we can have life and, and we can have joy and we can have peace. All these things the world wants. You know that. I mean, they're constantly looking for stuff. Media is always trying to tell us what, we, what they think we need. And uh, sometimes you can get sucked into it. And that, that's fine. Okay, I'm not, I'm not saying that we need to just, you know, shun the world and go live in monasteries. Because that's not what Martin Luther ever suggested. In fact, he said that was a bad plan. Okay. Because... The world needs believers in Christ shining the light of Jesus in their every, every aspect of their lives. I may have said this before, so forgive me if I've repeated myself, but when I was uh, working for a newspaper down in northern Missouri, and uh, uh, the chief of police was a member of the congregation where I, was, where I served, I mean, where I, where I uh, worshipped. I wasn't a pastor then, but where I, where I attended worship. And, uh, and so I went to his office often when it was my turn as the newspaper reporter to go and check in and see what other, what other criminal activity was going on the, you know, the last day. And um, I remember talking with him about the struggle that I had about being a, a, a newspaper reporter and I was a Christian and, and uh, you know, Christians and how can they work in all these areas of the, of the you know, the, gov the government and the fire and the police and all this stuff. And, and he said, he said, Chris, we need Christians in every area of our society. And I said, why is that? And he said, because they need to, because Jesus needs to be shined, shining in, in all the areas, okay? He said, we need Christian police officers who will carry out the law faithfully, not just on the whim. He said, we need, we need firefighters that, will, that, will, that are believers in Jesus who will faithfully serve and help and serve the way God's called them to serve. He said, we need faithful sheriffs we need faithful judges, faithful, I'm sorry, Christian judges and Christian uh, sheriffs. He said, because these people are going to shine the light of Jesus in their work. He said, they may not necessarily be, you know, evangelizing, but he said, they're going to epitomize the love of Christ by shining through their, through their work. And I just remember that was so impactful to me. And he said, also to me, he said, we need Christian newspaper reporters, which is what I was, okay, at the time. And I was like, okay, like that really hit me because I thought, yeah, that's it. Because God wants, has put all people in all, all positions, you know, whether you're a teacher, uh, whatever. You work in any area of, of, of society, okay? 
Because God needs Christians who are shining the lights of Jesus in all areas. Because Jesus knows there are a lot of people you work with that don't believe in God. Okay? And they need to see Jesus in action, and you're going to be it. Okay? And that's a great opportunity because if God's already pouring stuff into you every day, every day he's pouring into you. He's pouring his love and all the, all the blessings he blow, pours into you, okay? That's a great opportunity to share that, 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 uh, that joy and hope and peace that you have because your, your, your unbelieving colleagues are going to want, they're going to want that. They want to know that. They're going to see that. For, no, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich, Yet for your sake, he became poor so that by his poverty might become, that you by his poverty might become rich. So that's, that's wonderful, you know. We see that elsewhere in our, in our text where, you know, the, the servant, um, the, you know, the, 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 the mighty king comes to serve. You know, Jesus says, I, I didn't come to be served, I came to serve. And give his life as a ransom so that you and I don't have to die because we've already sinned and broken every commandment, at least one of them, if not today, probably yesterday, probably the day before, and every day of your life. Okay? Jesus came so that we would be forgiven when we confess our sins, receive God's forgiveness, and then we can move forward as redeemed children of God who, have, who, who, who know and experience that love, that joy, that peace <clears throat> that the world is craving so I pray, so pray and ask God, help me to be a, a, a witness to those around me. Help me to be the light of Jesus around my, the people I'm around so that more people will know you, dear Jesus, will come to you, dear Jesus, so that they can also experience the same love and joy and peace that I get to experience day in and day out as your child of God. Amen. Now the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding... Because, you know, the world is trying to figure it all out, okay? But we know where the peace comes from. It comes from Christ. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, it will guard your hearts and your mind in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please rise as you're able as we confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, God of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary. He suffered. He suffered and was buried. The third day he rose again, according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God, and with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who receives the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Let us pray for all people of God according to their names. God of our salvation, your son warned that your people would face opposition from the world. Give courage and fortitude to your pastors and people that they would boldly sing your praises, gladly endure suffering for the name of Jesus, and continue by your grace to the end. We therefore pray for Pastor Matt Harrison, our LCMS president, Pastor Alan Buss, our Northern Illinois District President, Pastor Carl Fay, our circuit visitor, and all pastors in our area. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for the upcoming LCMS National Convention in Milwaukee. Be with those who work to prepare for our Synod's Convention. Strengthen and equip all pastors and lay people 
who will attend the convention, that together they will make decisions that will glorify you and will build up our synod. Lord, in your mercy. We thank you, Lord God, for the church leaders, our local church leaders, including the Board of Elders. We pray for your spirit to equip and encourage them with your word, that they will make decisions that will glorify you and build up our congregation. Lord, in your mercy. Use your spirit, dear Lord, to encourage us to read or listen to your holy word every day, that we will be regularly filled up with that truth and be reminded that that truth sets people free. Lord, in your mercy. We pray, Lord, for the ministries you've allowed us to serve and do here at the congregation. We pray uh, for our food pantry and the Connecting Point Cafe. We pray for our members who help and run these ministries. Pray that your light will shine through these volunteers to those who come to these ministries. Bless our neighbors who come to use these ministries that they will see Jesus in our words and actions. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of life, grant that all who partake of Holy Communion today would present themselves as those brought out of death into life, repenting of their transgressions and gratefully receiving your son's body and blood for the forgiveness of their sins. Lord, in your mercy. The curse of sin brings division within families. Grant unity of faith within the households of our congregation. Give wisdom and peace where there is anger and strife. Bless parents with faithfulness to teach their children the truth of your word. Lord, in your mercy. God of all creation, you appoint authorities to keep order for the good of your people. Uh, Bless the authorities in our land with wisdom to seek the common good. Deliver them from the temptations to promote evil and oppose your will. We pray, therefore, President Biden, Vice President Harris, the men and women of the House of Representatives, the men and women in the Senate, the Supreme Court Justices, Illinois Governor Pritzker, and as Plains Mayor Goskowski. Lord, in your mercy, we thank you for the sacrificial work and service of the men and women serving our community in the uh, fire department, the police department, and in all first responding situations. Send your spirit to encourage these men and women as they serve you each day. Lord, in your mercy, we pray also for those men and women serving our country and the various branches of the armed forces. Strengthen them daily as they serve where you have called them. Lord, in your mercy, Look upon those who are persecuted for the name of Jesus. Be their dread warrior against the evil ones. Strengthen them to endure and to make known your mercy through the witness of their suffering. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our members and our friends who are struggling with their health and well-being, including Irma, uh, Sharon, Vicki, Nancy, Mary Lou, Fran and Walter, Marlene, Jean, Irene, Kathleen, Marion, Eugene, Sally, Phil and Susan, Carol, Ralph, and Alexandra. We pray, Lord, that you would heal these folks and strengthen them according to your will and in your time. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for the family of um, uh, Elsa and uh, for her sister Faye, who passed away recently, and uh, that you would comfort them and remind them of the truth that you are with them always at the end of the age. We also pray for the family of Liliana, who passed away. We pray, Lord, that you would comfort that family and strengthen them, reminding them, Lord, how much you love them of your grace and your mercy. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for those celebrating birthdays today and this week, including Eugene and Diane. We thank you, Lord God, for another year of life you've granted them. Um, And we ask that you bless them, Lord. Uh, Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercies through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. That is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Amen. Luther's